the Large Scale Systems Museum, located in New Kensington, Pennsylvania, is, I think, a rather unique museum dedicated to computers, both the personal computers and the larger scale systems, which are maybe a bit short of the traditional mainframe that people have in mind with that term, and still much larger than personal computers that most people are familiar with. These are the basic number crunchers of business, and uh, I don't know of any other museum that's really dedicated to them. New Kensington is a small town located on the south side of the Allegheny River and several miles uh, to the east of the eastern edge of Pittsburgh. So it's essentially kind of a suburb of Pittsburgh. Easily reached from the city along uh, Highway 28 along the north side of the river and then jumping over the river on the bridge into New Kensington. As I understand it, the museum has two floors each with uh, two different collections owned by two different people. The downstairs is the primary museum for the large-scale systems, while upstairs is primarily a collection of vintage personal computers of all brands and types. The first part of this slideshow deals with the upstairs museum, in other words, the Museum of Personal Computers. Okay, so the floor is just laid out, and this is actually, I think, an old department store. And the computers are arranged more or less by brand. Here are some of the early uh, stuff, such as the MSI 8080 and the Kenback. Many would argue this is the first personal computer. And then the Altair and some of the other Altair models. And then we get into the Commodore. There's a Kim computer there, Commodore Pets, a few different models, Commodore Disk Drive, some of the portable machines. There's the uh, Kim again, and some of their calculators are there as well. And there are some of the other models and some of the printers. And here's some of the Atari equipment. And I believe this is more Atari equipment. And then we switch over to the Radio Shack stuff, the TRS-80 models. Quite a few different models represented here. And there's one of their screen printers. More TRS-80 models. And the color computers. Here are some computers based on the 1802 microprocessor. Here's a Cosmac VIP, uh, more of that, and several other models using the 1802. RCA keyboard, and this is the AIM-65, which was a Rockwell product, sort of a mini development system for the 6502. And here's a play card for uh, Steve Wozniak's Blue Box, and a copy of the original Apple I computer. And then uh, various Apple computers and printers from the collection. And this is uh, more Apple equipment and uh, related machines. Lots of different models. There's a uh, signed poster, and this is some of the Next Computer uh, equipment, and the Canon Cat, which was sort of a dedicated word processor, and I think this is more of the Next equipment. And this is educational equipment like uh, project labs and uh, learning kits of various sorts and some of the early portable computers.
And here are some of the uh, early laptop models and other portables. This one unfolds into that. And here are some of the uh, early PDA and micro computers and uh, calculator watches. And then we go downstairs to the main large scale systems floor. Starting out with some uh, deck equipment. There's a uh, PDP-11 PDP here and um, a PDP-8. More PDP-11. very basic routines for, uh, for doing uh, And here's some data general equipment. And here's the museum owner with a DEC System 570. The eventual goal here is to have, uh, this is a quad pack display, so the idle job. So if the, if the idle task ever gets any, uh, any CPU time, it rotates the LEDs. All of the deck OSs that are capable of multitasking, you know, mm -hmm. there are several OSs for the PDP-11s uh, to address you know, different needs, different requirements and feature sets. And, uh, but all of them had their idle jobs uh, rotate the LEDs in different ways. So you could walk into a machine room and know what OS it was mm -hmm. running, if it was getting any idle time at all. But if I can... And here's an IBM System 34. I believe these are all peripherals for that system. And everything here works. It gets fired up and demonstrated. And this is a System 32. More of the System 32. And this is an IBM punch card writer. And this, I believe, is uh, part of a computer taken from the funeral services company Florida Wilbur that did caskets, urns, cremation services, that type of thing. And this is uh, an odd computer here. It's an old Heathkit vacuum tube analog computer. And here is more equipment. I'm not going to try to identify all of it. This is a, a Cray computer here. And so many systems I totally lost track of all of them during the tour, but it was fascinating to see it operated and uh, talked about by somebody who knows it all quite intimately. There's a uh, hard disk drive well with the hard drive cartridge is removed. It's more of a deck system. Bunch of terminals.
And this is about wrapping up my little slideshow. I hope it gives you a taste of the museum and hopefully you can arrange a visit if you're interested in this kind of thing.